All right, and we're back with Patty Chandler, author of Fibromyalgia Basics. So, Patty, tell us about some of the aggravators for fibromyalgia. What are some things that can kind of increase the pain or the inflammation? There are a lot of things that can increase the pain. Uh, one I'm sitting on is something that helps the pain. Uh, soft, deep, cushioned chairs. I had just purchased a Lazy Boy chair before I got fibromyalgia, about six months before I got fibromyalgia. When fibromyalgia hit me so strongly, I couldn't sit in that chair. As you're sitting in a soft, cushy chair, what happens is your body bends and curves, and it puts pressure on the tender points in your hips, on, the, on your hips down here and on your lower back. And as you're, you're slumped like this, you've got pressure on here. So you sit this way for about 10 minutes, and you say, oh, gee, I'm comfortable, okay. And then when you go to get up, you can't move. All those tender points have locked up. When you sit in a straight back chair, straight seat, straight back, whether it's a rocking chair or whatever, but it's a straight seat, straight back, your tender points are not pressed on, for example. They're, they're, you've got a straight posture going on, and all your muscles are exactly the way they're supposed to be, instead of slumped, instead of pressed on. So a chair, a soft cushy chair, a soft a hard bed, for example, is another thing. When you're laying on a hard bed, and you lay on your side, you're pushing on the tender points here on the hip, pushing on the tender points here, and you're scrunching your shoulder, pushing all the tender points here in your neck. I purchased for myself, I use a sleep number bed, which is uh, an air bed, and I'm number 40. <laughs> and what happens is that it molds to my body. And as I roll over on my back, it molds to my body again. As I roll over on my other side, it molds to my body again. And there's no pressure because it's evenly spaced all the way from front to back. On a hard mattress, say for example, when I'm traveling, I sleep on a hard mattress in the motel. They all have hard mattresses. I carry an air mattress with me and put it on top of that mattress so that my body is then molded to the air mattress. But sleeping on that hard mattress and on a hard pillow, or even a, a big thick pillow that scrunches up your head or, or puts your, blocks your airway, that creates pain. And it creates headache pain. Uh, so aside from the bed, aside from the chair, there's aggravators like not pacing yourself, simply overdoing, overdoing your limits, that's an aggravator. Uh, I had my car seat reupholstered to where the cushion that had been in the lower back that pushed me forward is now in the seat making my seat flat. And my seat is back in, in the back of the seat of my car is straight up and down. The seat here is straight across and I can drive all the way from here to Washington DC in 12 hours. I do stop and I get out and I walk of course, but I can do it without a lot of pain. Uh, there's edible aggravators. Edible aggravators, things like aspartame, NutraSweet, and all the other sweeteners, they are neurotoxins. These neurotoxins make your brain cells uh, excitable. <laughs> they start rattling and moving and going and fast, and they like bump into each other and aggravate each other to where it can create pain because they're nerve cells. Nerves make pain. Uh, Alkaloids in nightshades, uh, tomatoes, potatoes, and green peppers, and eggplant, and pimentos, and a number of other things, the small tomatoes. They're all a member of a family called nightshades, which have certain kinds of alkaloids, which are aggravating to those nerve, same nerve cells. I have found out, though, that I can eat potatoes at a meal, as long as I don't have any tomatoes or green peppers or anything else with it. Or I can have tomatoes at another meal, and not have potatoes and the other things with it. As long as I have only one of those nightshades, the uh, alkaloids don't build up in your system. What it is is it's a buildup. It's a, the tomatoes, the potatoes, the green peppers, and, and the pimentos and so on, when you have them all, say, in a pot of stew, all of that aggravates everything in your system. So what the idea is to trim it down to one either potatoes or tomatoes or green peppers for this meal or this day. The next day, tomatoes, potatoes, or green peppers, just one a day. Uh, that aggravator has helped a lot of people with arthritis, a lot of people with back pain, a lot of people with migraines, 
and also fibromyalgia. Uh, it also helps people that have chronic fatigue syndrome because that aggravates chronic fatigue also. Another, added, another edible aggravator is sugar, uh, excess sugar specifically. Uh, sugar is an inflammatory and anything that's an inflammatory, even though fibromyalgia is not an inflammatory condition, most of us have other conditions that go with fibromyalgia. A lot of people have rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia, diabetes and fibromyalgia, Lyme disease and fibromyalgia. A lot of people have something else along with it that is an inflammatory condition. That's pretty much why fibromyalgia is classified as a uh, Oh, what do you call it? <laughs> oh, shoot. Stop here now. Um, what's going um, What are those conditions? The rheumatoid arthritis and the... Oh, they're called a certain kind of condition. I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, anyway, they're all classified the same kind of conditions that, arth that rheumatoid arthritis and, and arthritis are conditions of. So our doctors are... The rheumat uh, rheumatologists will treat it, uh, and they have been working with trying to find out exactly what it is. They're not having a whole lot of luck because there's so many things that go on. They know it's a nervous condition, a condition of the nervous system shooting out pain signals when there is no actual pain going on. Uh, they also know that it's a misfiring of the hypothalamus that's not firing on all cylinders, so to speak. And so that makes all your, your hormones firing at different rates and different patterns that shouldn't be firing in that method at all. Tells one, the hypothalamus is like the, the master gland that tells the thyroid and the adrenal gland and all these others to, to shoot out exactly what they're supposed to shoot. Well, if the adrenal, if the hypothalamus is misfiring, it'll tell the thyroid to shoot out too much or the adrenal to not shoot out enough. And so your hormones are all misaligned. And so that's why a lot of people, especially women, who are going through menopause or have PMS symptoms are having such a hard time with it because the hypothalamus is involved in all of that. They don't know what causes fibromyalgia, but they know these things happen in fibromyalgia. They also know that muscle pain may be due to hypoxia, a lack of oxygen within the muscle cells. Not necessarily a lack of oxygen within the whole body, but a lack of oxygen within the cells. So there's all these... these Things that they know happen, they just don't know what causes it. And so things that aggravate it are things that aggravate the nervous system, things that aggravate like, like the excitotoxins and MSG and, and sugar and things like that that aggravate inflammation, that aggravate the nerve cells and so on. Um, all of that is a part of what they're... they're saying may cause it, it is possible in fibromyalgia, so we have to work at keeping those things away from our system. Excess sugar, alkaloids, excitotoxins like MSG and aspartame and that kind of thing. So.